Funding for This Is Nashville comes from you, our listeners, and Alliance Bernstein. Since 2019, employees have impacted our community by giving more than 5,000 hours of volunteerism in Middle Tennessee. AllianceBernstein.com. Alliance Bernstein is not affiliated with National Public Radio. I'm Khalil Ecolona, and this is Nashville. Happy National Voter Registration Day, everyone. All right, so speaking of our civic duties, I want to go back in time for a moment. Reflect back on your days in high school. Did you run for student council? Did your school have a student government association? Were you a part of clubs and organizations that worked to improve life for students and others? If your answer is yes, what did that experience give to you? If your answer is no, well, why didn't you get involved? In 2024, many students have made the honorable decision to get involved in their local governments, school boards, student government clubs, and more. They're feeling the need to make their voices heard as the choices adults make today affect young people's tomorrow. So some make the choice to work in the model United Nations or youth in government. What's that? Well, in Tennessee, YMCA Center for Civic Engagement hosts model UN nations and youth in government conferences for middle school and high school students. Last year, over 6,000 students from across the state participated. They operate just like the real model United Nations. For youth in government, students get hands-on experience with state government, going to the state house in the spring and taking place in real government officials where They serve as senators or representatives, justices and lawyers. And a student even takes on the role of the student governor. Sounds pretty cool. Now, joining us now are Ajay and Ajay, pardon me, and Aaron. They're two high school seniors who have both been involved with Tennessee's YMCA Center for Civic Engagement for the past several years. Aaron will serve as speaker pro tempore of the Red Senate for 2025 Youth in Government. And Ajay will serve as president of the International Court of Justice in the fall of 2024 Model UN Conference and then chief of staff to the youth governor at the Youth in Government Conference in 2025. Okay, Ajay, Aaron, welcome both to This is Nashville. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Great to have you here. So how are you guys doing today? How's it, how's it feel? Feels surreal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, really excited to be here. It must be nice to be missing school to be with us. Oh, yeah. For sure. That's awesome. Okay, well, you're welcome for that. And thanks to you both for being here. Okay, so tell me this, Aaron, what is on your to-do list for school? Oh, on my to-do list right now. Well, let's see. I have several tests that I need to make up because I missed a week of school a couple weeks back for because I had COVID. Oh, wow. Um, so I have some makeup work I need to get done, memorize my lines for the musical this fall, et cetera, et cetera. And what's the musical? It is called The Drowsy Chaperone. The Drowsy Chaperone. Very what what role are you playing? The Drowsy Chaperone. Oh, you're the lead in this. <laughs> yes, yes. Very, very exciting. Lots of lots of things happening. Okay. Awesome. Okay, Ajay. So I have a physics lab report to go back home and write up pretty much immediately after this. And then past that, I have to do a little bit of work managing my school's model UN delegation. Okay. What type of physics project? It's a projectile motion lab. Nice. That sounds like fun. What'd you do for it? Uh, Basically just tried to calibrate a launcher without using very much data to launch a marble a certain amount of distance. Nice. Okay. Let me ask you both this. What is your favorite part about being in high school right now? And you can say it's your last year. (laughs) Well, I mean, while it is my last year and while that's really awesome, um, my favorite thing about being in high school is like sort of getting to have my days just be very, very routine. Because in college, you get a lot more freedom to do things and make a lot more choices. So I'm just sort of trying to savor the routine as it is right now. All right. All right. Ajay? I think I'm really enjoying like the variety of education that I'm getting. Because once I get to college and further on, I'm going to like narrow down into a specific track. But in high school, I can pretty much academically explore whatever I want. And that's always something that I've been really interested in. Awesome. All right. So you both have been involved with the YMCA Center for Civic Engagement Model UN and Youth and Government programs for a while. Tell me this, Ajay, what why, how did you get involved? What was first? What first got you motivated to do this? So I started with the six. I started with the middle school conferences when I was in sixth grade over at Sunset Middle School, and my older brother had been doing youth and government for a while, and I saw it on like the list of activities that you could sign up for, and I thought, why not? I'll give it a shot. I signed up with a couple of my friends, and I went to the conference, and I absolutely loved it. I had a great time. I wrote a piece of legislation, and I got to like 
advocate for it in front of a bunch of my peers. It didn't necessarily go as far as I would have liked, but I still had a great time doing it, and I had a great time discussing legislation with more of my peers, and from then I was pretty much hooked. Did you have an interest in politics or political procedure before then? Not really before that, but I think that first conference was definitely sort of a kicker for it. All right, Aaron, what about you? Okay, so funny story, actually. Um, My freshman year of high school, I was friends with a junior in high school, and we were sitting in the library studying together one day, and I saw a sticker on the back of her laptop from uh, the virtual Tennessee Youth and Government Conference that had happened during the COVID year, and I was like, hey, what's that? And she immediately launched into an explanation of what youth and government was and just like how much she loved it, and I was like, wow, this sounds so fun. I would love to do this. I signed up and I just I immediately got hooked. It was it was incredible. I had no 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 concept of my government really mm. before before I started the Youth and Government Conference and then I realized um I learned so much about procedure just in that first year and about the inner workings of the state of Tennessee. And it was just so enthralling to me. I didn't want to stop. You said you learned a lot about procedure. Did you learn a lot about parliamentary procedure? Mm-hmm. That's that's what I meant by procedure. Parliamentary procedure is very, um, very. we follow it very strictly at the YMCA CCE Youth and Government Conference. And it is a really, really awesome way to um, facilitate debate that is respectful, open-minded, and gives everyone a time to speak. Awesome. Not too many people are masters of Robert's Rules of Order. So you have a leg up on a lot of folks. Right? <laughs> Okay, so you you both have been participating in these conferences. You're gearing up for a new year. What are you looking forward to? What are you looking forward to get out of and participating, given that you guys both have experience in this for a while? Ajay? Right. So I'm really looking forward to transitioning from like participating in these conferences, maybe as a delegate, as a lawyer, to a leader. So... The YMCA student conferences are almost entirely student-led. You have students serving as the secretary general, the president of the International Court of Justice, justices, presidents of the General Assembly at your model UN conferences. And then, like you mentioned in your intro, you have a student governor, student chairs of the General Assembly, student justices. All of those components are pretty much entirely student-led. So this year, I have the chance to serve as the president of the International Court of Justice at my model UN conference and the chief of staff to the youth governor at my youth and government conference. And I'm really looking forward to those roles because I get to lead the people around me and basically just help them have as good of an experience through these model UN and youth and government programs as I did with my student officers when I was in my earlier years. What is it about leading that really attracts you? It's, I, I can look in your eyes and you're, you're really excited about this. What is that attractive element about leading that you're looking forward to experiencing? I think just these conferences have really given me a lot in terms of like transforming me as a speaker, a thinker, and a communicator. And this is the best way that I can think of to be able to give back to these conferences and help other people reach those same places. All right. Aaron, you were, you were not in your head, yes. Absolutely. So, um, no, the reason I wanted to become a leader in the spaces, in, in these uh, YMCA youth and government spaces in the first place, is because um, when I was a freshman, I just, I saw my chair and I really, really looked up to the chair of the Senate, which I was a youth senator my first year. And I just saw how composed she was and how good she was at facilitating debate. And um, I just, I have loved having that as a role model. And I would love to be that for the next generation. And I would love to help other younger people have the experience that I did coming into the youth and governments that kept me coming back for more. I want to talk about the Model UN for a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. people can understand the value of youth and government conference, but also understanding how the state government works. But Model UN, you're reenacting what the United Nations does. That's a global body. What do you think participating in the Model United Nations can give to students here in Tennessee? I think that there's a few different things. So first, having like a general awareness of international issues is something that's important. A lot of times people think people feel sort of disconnected from these international issues. But at the end of the day, everything that's happening in the world right now is going to spill down to Nashville, spill down to Tennessee as a whole. So it's important to be aware of what's happening in the world around us. But even beyond that, these conferences No matter what the subject matter is, these conferences have taught me to be a better thinker, to be able to analyze resolutions and pieces of legislation critically, to be able to communicate with people and spread my message effectively. And I think that that's just a skill that I can really take away from these conferences and apply to almost any part of my life. And I think that that's why it's super important. It's definitely a wonderful skill to have. Now, Aaron, last year, I understand you represented Brazil and you were a delegate at the Model UN Conference. What did you do during that time? Mm. So um, as Brazil, 
we focused on creating a piece of legislation that would um, help redistribute economic wealth throughout the global south um, while also um, helping aid the deforestation crisis of the Amazon. And it was really, really interesting. I agree with so many of the points that Ajay made in that um, it helps model United Nations really helps you to think critically about a subject that is completely foreign, no pun intended, mm -hmm. to, to you. Um, so Tennessee can definitely be a bit of a bubble. And I can say that I knew very little about international relations before I started participating in Model UN. And now I would say that I know a decent amount. So, um, yeah, as part of Brazil, we composed legislation that would help to um, incentivize countries to um, move to... Excuse me. We crafted legislation that would help um, essentially aid aid Brazil in deflecting in deflecting and de intensifying. That's not a word. Well, we'll <laughs> de intensifying. Make, it's, it's one for right the deforestation now. Deforestation crisis. Okay. For sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I do want to ask you this. You're both young Americans, but you're learning about situations uh, going on in other countries. Did you, did you feel the desire to learn a little bit more about what they gave you for your model UN practice? Did you have a desire to learn a little bit more about what's happening in these countries? Because it's one thing to talk to someone, a 17-year-old who's a Brazilian, about what's happening in their country. It's another thing to kind of imagine what their circumstance and situation is. Did it give you this, this sense of you feel a little bit more connected to what's going on in these other places that you represented? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's another really important part of these conferences is sometimes like being in Nashville, being in Tennessee, we might be detached from some of the things that are going around in the world. But I think that these conferences provide a really valuable opportunity to expand your perspective. My freshman year, I participated in the General Assembly as a representative of Bangladesh. And I got to, I drafted a piece of legislation trying to advocate for the women's rights crisis in Bangladesh. And through that, I got a I got a much deeper look at the way that things are going in Bangladesh and in the subcontinent in general. And I got some perspective on that that I don't think I would have had without doing that research for my resolution. So in just doing that research, I learned so much more about these issues that are going on all around the world that maybe I wasn't I wouldn't be aware of otherwise. Do you both stay up on international news because of it? Yes, Ab absolutely. And I mean, even even just the state of Tennessee might be a bit of a bubble. The country itself is a bubble. Mm. Um, we're as Americans, we have so many privileges, and I think that Model United Nations really helps to expand um, expand people's perspectives and also expand people's empathy for. Um, what's happening. And I know several people who did one model United Nations conference and um, now they would like to major in international relations. Wow. Okay. Now, what is the conference actually like? Is it fun? Is it boring at times? Do things get heated when you all are debating legislation? Oh, absolutely. There is heat. But there <laughs> is also, it is so much fun just from top to bottom, from the moment you arrive to the moment you leave and no one ever wants to leave. Um, the rounds of debate are fun. The intro sessions are fun. And obviously there are um, some more serious, somber moments. But even in that, we know that it has to happen in order for the conference to run smoothly. And it really, it's just like every second being there is a treat. Now, now compare the Model UN to the Youth in Government Conference, which focuses on state government here in Tennessee. What's the difference between the two outside of their focus? So I personally prefer Model United Nations. Aaron doesn't necessarily agree with me there, but I think that the Model UN conference is a little bit shorter, but they are sort of mirrors of each other in that in Model United Nations, you're debating resolutions before the General Assembly. In Youth in Government, you're debating bills put before the Tennessee General Assembly. Both conferences have their court components. Both conferences have leadership with secretaries. It's they're very similar conferences in that they both give students the opportunity to explore executive, legislative, and judicial branches of government, be that Tennessee government or international government. Okay, now Ajay said, did you disagree a little bit, Aaron? Where do you disagree on? Um, so I don't disagree in that model. United, United Nations is a, a mirror of youth and government. They are absolutely um, quite similar in their framework. I would say that they're different in their content. I'd say in youth and government, it's a little bit easier to do a deep dive into the content that you're learning because the field of international relations is just so much more vast than um, the state of Tennessee. We are one state as opposed to an entire body of countries. So um, typically um, freshmen are a little bit more comfortable because they feel as though like they've been able to like do a deep dive on 
on their on their topics. Although, of course, you can do that in Model United Nations, too. But um, I think that my main difference is I like how the chambers are slightly smaller in youth and government. So I feel like each delegate gets um, more debate time slightly. Mm. That's usually what it feels like in a youth and government chamber to me. And the coolest part, I think, is that we get to be in the Tennessee state capitol, which is just so special and you really you like feel the sensation of awe when you're sitting in there now, now i understand that this experience you just described for us inspired you to get involved more with metro council here in nashville like you took steps to get some state legislation passed as well tell us what you did yes i did so on this the day of national voter registration um i worked with a team of four other high school students um all of whom participated, well, three of whom participated in the Tennessee Youth and Government Program uh, to create a law with um, Senator Heidi Campbell uh, requiring high schools to send students emails with a voter registration procedure because even though election commissions are required by law to come to every school and like help with the voter registration process, uh, many students can fall through the cracks. They could be absent. They could have a free period during the window where the election commission is there. So we wanted something that would be sort of a fail safe and provide really easy access to voter registration directly from the schools. That's pretty cool. Now, let me ask a, a question about the future for you, Ajay. You know, do you think that you mentioned how these skills you developed, you're going to carry on with you throughout whatever you do in life? Will you are you thinking about at post high school still being involved in community and government? Absolutely. Um, I think that these programs were sort of a large motivator behind me. I think that I'm going to go to law school after my undergrad. And I think that these programs were definitely a huge motivator behind that decision. I got to learn a lot of the inner workings. I got to participate as a lawyer in these conferences. And it was a really engaging experience. And it's something that I definitely want to pursue further now. Let me ask you this. Final question for you both. What does being an American citizen mean to you? All right. So to me, being an American citizen means constantly looking for ways to make this country better. And I mean, I love this country. And what that means is that I'm always looking for ways that I can make my community better, make my state better and make my country better because I want everyone else to be able to experience this country as fully and love this country as much as I do. All right. Aaron? So um, something that really stands out to me about being an American citizen, especially a young American citizen, is um, as a young person, I have this understanding that like our generation, we are tomorrow and we really need to build our community. And Youth in Government and Model United Nations are such community-based conferences. They've really sort of instilled a sense within me that the best way to progress America is by building our community, caring for it, and um, outreaching as one. Pretty honored to have you both here. Thank you both so much. Thank you. All right. Aaron and Ajay are both high school seniors here in Nashville who've been involved with the YMCA Center for Civic Engagement Programs. We'll have links to that program, which is dedicated to offering financial aid to covering the cost of attending the conferences to students who want to participate on today's web post. Congratulations to you both. Have a great senior year. I would tell you to get rest, but you're teenagers. You sleep in already. Okay, when we come back, we'll speak with two students who are using their voices to inform others and legislators about what students care about. This is Nashville. Funding for This Is Nashville comes from you, our listeners, and Music City Prep Clinic, Nashville-based provider for prep and offering comprehensive sexual health services in an environment designed to be safe, professional, and shame-free. Learn more at musiccityprep.org. I'm Khalil Colonna, and this is Nashville. Today, we're talking with local high schoolers to learn how they're participating in civic life right here in Tennessee. Now, joining us to share how they're using their voices to make a difference are Emmy. She's the editor-in-chief of her school newspaper, a freelance writer whose pieces have been published worldwide. She's also a leader of Kittisonship's Team Advisory Board. Joining her is Brendan. He's the president and founder of Students for Education, a student-led organization that brings together students from across the state to work together to meet with and lobby legislators for priorities most important to them, the students. Emmy and Brendan, thank you both so much for being here. Welcome to This is Nashville. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, so how's the day treating you guys? It's, It's all right. You know, woke up a little late this morning. 
had to rush into school, but um, that just comes with being a senior, I think. So it's, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. How, how about you, Amy? I'm a junior. I woke up pretty early, and that was my problem. But it's been a great day so far. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so tell me this: What is your biggest adolescent worry or concern these days? I mean, there's so much going on every day. Right now, I'm really focused on polarization and depolarization in Tennessee, especially. I want to be able to focus on having conversations with people who disagree with me and have that not be an issue. Mm -hmm. There's also the ever-present threat of, you know, gun violence, which is something I've written a lot about. Um, And I think that that's really on our minds these days. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I think as well, turnout is a big thing. Um, You know, I'm thinking about what is my generation or those just a year or two older than me you know, why aren't they voting as much? And, and how can I encourage students my age um, to vote when we become 18, we're become registered and are able to vote? I guess I'm very impressed. I, you know, I would expect your answers to that question to be like, can you get Chapel Roan tickets? But you guys are trying to fix the world right now. Well, that too. That too. I wouldn't mind tickets. Okay. Okay. Now you're both, you're, you're doing something unique. You're using your voice to speak out for you know, what you believe personally, and you're trying to lift up the voices of fellow students as well. But, you know, not everybody is willing to kind of say, okay, this is what I believe. Let me get out there and voice this. Brenda, tell me, when did you first realize that you could and you wanted to use your voice in this public way that you are? I think a lot of the conversation around this needs to, you know, come from a place of recognition. Um, I go to the university school in Asheville, which is across the street from Vanderbilt, it's a private school. So this was never an extremely foreign concept for me, the idea that my voice mattered and whether that was in conversations with school admin or, you know, state legislators, um, that was something that, you know, I was given those opportunities very early on. I think that it's, it started with USN and the exceptional opportunities they gave me. Um, but you know, not all kids go to USN. In fact, most kids don't in our state. Um, and most kids are in, you know, Public schools are in rural Tennessee, and it's much, much harder to come to that realization when you don't have the support system that, for example, I had. Mm-hmm. Emmy. Yeah, I agree. Building off of that, writing so important. That's how I got into all of this work. Um, I had my first piece published in sixth grade in an anthology, and I had my first op-ed published in seventh, and that's not everybody's path, and it's not really realistic to expect that. I was definitely raised, and I'm really lucky to have been raised just know that my voice is important and that it deserves to be heard. And, and for those students who are in rural Tennessee, our voice, even if it's just writing, I shouldn't say just writing, it, it's our power. We can send those pitches to magazines across the country, across the world, because the world deserves to know what it's like to be a teen in Tennessee because it means something. Mm-hmm. Now, you're, you're sharing your op-eds. You're getting published. Mm-hmm. I would, interesting to hear from both of you. How do you deal with folks criticism from people who may not necessarily agree with what you're writing in an op-ed but want to reach out to you and have this this difficult discourse that you were previously talking about that you wanted to engage in i will say there's a positive and negative way to do that as i spoke about polarization earlier i had an opportunity to speak at one of the anti-neo-nazi rallies and i actually my parents told me no because they felt like it was too dangerous and i Definitely didn't push on that. I agree with them. But there are also times that I have people come up to me saying, hey, I disagree with this. I want to understand your perspective. And to that, like, I welcome that. That's the way that we move towards progress one way or another. That's the way that we learn from each other. That's the way that we grow together. When you're in those conversations after Mm -hmm. and you reflect on what's been discussed, how do you feel? I think it definitely depends on the setting of the conversation, but assuming it's a productive conversation, I feel a lot better. I feel like I learned something. I sometimes walk out of conversations knowing that my mind wasn't changed, but I became a better person because I now understand the other perspective. And I think that that's sometimes it doesn't mean convincing the other person that I'm right. Sometimes it just means understanding each other and rehumanizing each other. Sometimes We see people on the other side of the issue, on the other side of the aisle, and we think how horrible, how single-minded. And then we have these conversations and we realize sometimes it's just that they want to be safe, too. They just want to love who they love, too. 
Now, Brendan, you're advocating for specific policy changes and legislation. How do you deal with folks who may think that that idea is not good or have a, a, a different view of what policy should be enacted? Yeah, I think the first thing to to do when you're in you know my position or Emmy's position is to recognize the context of the state and the place we live. So if I'm going to go lobby in the legislature, I need to understand that, you know, uh, Republicans are going to be the people who I should be spending a lot of my time with because I can't pass anything without the support of the Republican Party. Um, and so it's, you know, the first thing you need to do is understand and come to this level of compromise in your own head about, you know, what can I give up here? What am I okay with with compromising on? Because you will need to. Uh, and I think that is kind of emblematic of the larger point. That is, civil discourse and dialogical thinking are just two of the most incredible pieces of human interaction. And, and you know, I believe that, and I think so many others do too. And generally, we all want the same things for the most part. We want better schools. We want, you know, higher paid teachers. We, we want our system to work better. Um, we just have different ways to get there. So let's go in. Um, let's, you know, meet with these legislators, no matter what side of the aisle they're on. And let me start at a point where we disagree, whether it's a favorite movie or mm. uh, I went in for one meeting last year and I saw a guitar on this legislator's wall and I asked him if he played, and we talked about that for the first 10 minutes, and then by the end of the 45-minute meeting, he had signed on to co-sponsor a piece of legislation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it all starts there. It all starts with compromise, and um, just that is something that I think everyone needs to wrap their head around more as, you know, Emmy was talking about polarization gets worse and partisan infighting gets so much worse, so. Yeah, partisan infighting is pretty bad. Polarization is pretty high, but also there's the potential for political violence, right? Yeah. We've seen a couple of instances in this presidential campaign this summer that has drawn the call for more people to engage in civic discourse, but not necessarily people are willing to go out there and do it. This is something that's both a part of the voices that you are all sharing with us. And I want to ask you a little bit, Emmy, about kittisonship because you know, you it's a nonpartisan platform that really gets kids involved to get them to, hey, share your voice even though you are too young to vote. Tell me more about the organization. Yeah, it's genuinely an incredible organization. They're actually running a contest right now, inviting students to write a speech as if they just won the presidency, like their inauguration speech. Okay. Um, two to three minutes, and then they'll have the opportunity to actually present it, get that speaking opportunities and share those perspectives with the world, which is so important. Kittisenship provides a platform for students to first learn, which is the most important first step. They're going in and they're becoming educated on the issues. And no matter what they believe, back to that nonpartisan idea, they have the space to speak on it while being informed, which is something we don't always see, mm. kid or adult. And then they're providing them an outlet and an opportunity to share that perspective with the world and potentially earn some money off it. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty cool. Now, Brendan, you started Students for Education. Tell me, where'd that idea come from? And tell me more about the group. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. Um, it came from a YouTube short that I was watching on a bike ride when I was a high school freshman. Uh, it was just talking about the state of the American education system. And, you know, that was kind of the first moment where I realized, you know, maybe the level of education quality in this state and in this country is, you know, not the same. Maybe my education is uh, of a higher quality because of, you know, the kind of privilege that I found myself in than uh, the average Tennessee public school. So started researching uh, for about a year. I just had a 100 page Google Doc, <laughs> with, wow. you know, um, looking at other countries, their education system. I got really into policy, but um, and, and kind of coinciding with the covenant tragedy, uh, realized that maybe the common thread was that students aren't included in the conversation. And so we started meeting with legislators, Metro Council people um, and you know, started to come to the understanding that our voices have power, but more than that, they have utility. Um, mm. You know, the ideas we bring to the table are new. They're a different perspective. And for as many times as you'll hear, you know, people say that they want to hear from a different perspective, 
that's never really meant students. So, um, you know, I think it's a really great thing that we've created and we're across the state. Um, but as far as things go, we just need to realize and, and understand that, you know, our voices have power. And, and every word that I choose to say and that Emmy says is, is going to change the outcome of a certain event. So. If you're just tuning in, this is Nashville, and I'm your host, Khalil Lake Colonna. We're talking this hour with high school students about their dedication to civic engagement and making sure their voices are heard. Now, I understand that Students for Education has 17 chapters in Tennessee. Yes, we do, and um, hopefully that'll be more next week and the week after, um, and hopefully that'll be outside of Tennessee soon. I think that we need to engage students uh, you know, c- uh, nationwide. Um, in their legislature and what's happening in D.C., but also what's happening, you know, in their municipality or in their metro council and their mayor's office, because that's the stuff that really affects the way I live and and you live. It's, you know, the state and local decisions. Um, Yeah, but it's a a pretty great thing, at least in my opinion. Congratulations. I, I understand that. You have a right to be biased. I'm pretty impressed because a lot of times when it comes to politics and initiatives, a lot of people have reluctance to engage in something that doesn't immediately affect them. And here you are, a high school senior. You're working to improve situations so students under you who are coming into school after you have a better situation. That seems to be what you both are involved with and dedicated to. Talk to me about wanting to make this situation better for everyone, something that you may not be able to experience. Why is that so important to you, Amy? I know we all want to leave a legacy, but more than that, we want to leave this place better than we found it. I, first thing any of my friends will say about me is that I love Tennessee. I love it with my whole heart. Me and my friends are going on a trip and we're trying to go to all the counties of Tennessee before we graduate. I love Tennessee. Okay. And I want to leave it better than I found it. I want to give this place I love a future that's better than it looks right now. Um, not to say it's horrible right now, but... There are some fundamental issues in the state, even just talking polarization. And I want it to look better than I found it. And I think organizations like Citizenship, using my voice through writing, are exactly the way to do that. Brendan? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. Um, I've grown up in Nashville my whole life. Um, and I, you know, cannot think of a, a better place to live. Uh, I love this place. Um you know, I love the nature. I think it's the most beautiful state in the country. Um, I think Emmy agrees with me, too. Hmm. Um, and again, it, I want to come back here and I want to live here after college. Um, you know, I'd like to lead a life here. And I don't really care um, so much what the partisan makeup of the state is, you know, to an extent I do. But um, I, I more care that every perspective is heard and every voice is heard. So with what I'm doing through SFE um, or what Emmy is doing, uh, we are, you know, building these, these outlets and these means through which other students can do a really powerful thing, mm-hmm. which is use their voice. Um, and, and so that's the beauty of it to me. Let me ask you this, 15 years, where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself in still engaged in something like this? Yeah, I, um, I think once you have the politics bug at 17, it's hard to shake it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I'll maybe run for office or something like that. But, um, you know, I, I think we also need to return to this idea that politics is a profession of service. Um, mm. And it's, you know, I, I would be a million times more impressed by any student who mobilized all of the people on their street, all of their neighbors for a certain issue they were passionate about than, you know, than anything I've done. Mm. Um, because that's all this is. It's it's conversation, and it's tough conversation sometimes, but it's conversation we need to have. Now, Emmy, do you see yourself getting into journalism? I mean, in 15 years, will you be the news director at WPLN News? My dream is to go and do some international relations, actually. I want to go to the Middle East and do diplomacy. So, All right. Well, my dream. I think you both will be heading there. You need any help, just hit me up. I'll help you out. (laughs) Emmy is a high school junior and Brendan is a senior. I want to thank you both for being here and thank you for dedicating your time to our collective futures. Really appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to take one more break. When we come back, we'll talk with two more students who are serving as student representatives on the Mayor's Youth Council. As always, you can join the conversation by tweeting us at This Is Nashville. Stay with us.
Khalil A. Colonna, and this is Nashville. Today, we're speaking with young people who are dedicating their lives to making change in their communities and working to make life better here in Middle Tennessee. Now, joining us now are two students who are making change in the local government. Hannah was recently sworn in as Metro Nashville Public Schools Junior Student Board member. That happened just last week. And she's also serving on the Mayor's Youth Council. Khalid is a senior and is starting his second year on the Mayor's Youth Council. The Mayor's Youth Council just celebrated its 25th year of youth leadership and action. Hannah and Khalid, welcome to This is Nashville. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. All right. So how's the day going? How are you enjoying yourselves? Um, It's going pretty good so far. I'm really excited to be here. A little bit nervous now that I'm on air. Um, But yeah, it's been great. School's going really good. Yeah, it was a pretty good morning, you know, had breakfast, got out of bed on time. So it's just a normal day. Getting to school on time is like one of the biggest challenges, I bet, huh? So difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sometimes it might stick with you throughout adult life, but that's a whole nother conversation. Okay. Now, you know, I I do before I I, before I begin, I want to know if you need me to write a public radio host note for to your school's. For not being there. Do you need me to write a note for you? I very much do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I, I, I think you might. I got your back. I'll give you that hall pass, yeah. so to speak. All right, so what's the best part about being in high school right now for you both? Khalid? Um, I definitely say it's it's nice to be, especially I go to Hume Fog, and it's nice to have so many opportunities to take uh, very interesting classes. Uh, we are one of the only schools that offer AP Physics 2, and it's one of the most interesting classes I've ever taken in my entire life. It's like electricity, magnetism, and you just get to learn about how the world works around you on like the atomic level. Mm. And I really Pretty interesting. That. Hannah? I would say for me right now, I've really been enjoying actually like having the time to go out and experience social events. I think football games, fall semester is always my favorite for that. Um, just having school spirit, appreciating my school for what it offers. And I would say as well, my classes, as Khalid said, um, we have the A system, the Cambridge programs at Overton. So I think that's super refreshing. Rooting for the team, win or lose. Win or lose. You got to. You got to. Now, you're both working hard as students to as representatives for change. And you're both on the mayor's youth council and other leadership positions. No one really kind of wakes up and decides, hey, I want to be on the mayor's youth committee. What was that process like? Hannah, what got you interested into this? Okay, so both my parents are immigrants. They came here pretty late in their life um, from two different hemispheres. So my dad was born and raised in Vietnam. My mom didn't come here until she was 19. She was born in Kenya. So pretty much for them, the experience in school and overall through walks of life was I knew it was going to be completely different from mine. Um, so kind of hearing about certain issues, hearing about what's going on back home and being here in the U.S. and understanding my rights and trying to uphold that and knowing how important it is. I wanted to be civically engaged um, from a very young age. I didn't really have that many people in my family that were voting, um, going out and doing things, had super strong political opinions. So having access to pretty much any information that you want on the Internet is super duper important. Um, and yeah, that was kind of my motivation to continue looking out for programs like that and finding ways that I can make a difference in my community. Do you feel it's your duty to do this? Oh, a hundred percent. Um, I know that especially, I can feel this all the time that my people are underrepresented. Um, and then as well as young people, um, earlier on, I kind of heard the previous guys talk about voter, voter turnout for young people. Um, and making a difference in that is really important to me. Now, Khalid, you started something called bike for bites. Tell me about that. Walk us through the idea where it came from and how you got other students to get to participate in this work that you're doing. So sophomore year, I took this uh, class called AP Human Geography. And one of the units was just talking about urban city development. And I was looking at Nashville as a city and I was comparing it to other cities. And I feel like they have so many like um, organizations that help the um, unhoused in like food delivery. And I just, I see a lot of people on the, on the side of like on sidewalks in downtown Nashville. And sometimes you see them like even like rummaging in trash for their finding a meal. And I wanted to find a way to maybe, uh, give them a, a fresh, like clean meal that they could rejuvenate themselves with. So um, in sophomore year, I 
went to the Secretary of State and I filed to create like an official nonprofit and then got like the proper documents so that we could, you know, run it outside of our school. And then I applied uh, as a club for our school and I did it at Hume Fogg and MLK. And then we just drafted students to come volunteer and we just bike around downtown Nashville giving like prepackaged snacks and water to the homeless and um, just around, you know, on the sidewalks, we just look around. We usually have a path that we follow and they like, they know the path. So then, and we come at the same time every week. So then they just like come to us basically. Um, and we try to, you know, go around. That's really, that's really, really cool. You came up with this idea as a sophomore. When I was a sophomore, I was trying to hold on my job, hold on to my job as a dishwasher <laughs> at a local diner. And here you are creating 501c3s. Now, now, Hannah, you are the MNPS junior student board member. How did you, how did you find out about that and, and other board members? Like what made you decide to apply? to get that position. So when Metro Schools bought, brought back student board members after COVID, um, I pretty much saw an Instagram post about it on the at Metro Schools account. And immediately I knew this was something I was going to be interested in later on. So kind of waiting, seeing the application open up again, um, knowing that, oh, it's a two-year term. So, you know, they welcome in a new member every year. Um, then you serve two years and then you walk off. Um, so then whenever it became my time, my sophomore year, I was even a little bit hesitant to apply. Um, I think I was kind of conscious of the other young people who have great things on their resumes already that may want to take this position that might make a greater impact on the board. Um, but either way, um, I made it to the final round of interviews, um, sitting at the table with uh, board representatives and people who are on the ballot for this year. Um, I got to talk with them about what I wanted to do, about what my plans were in life um, and why I wanted to be on the board. And I got the position. So you got the position and the two year commitment wasn't a problem for you. Oh, not at all. Um, kind of. I felt initially that once you walk into a big space like that, that once you step off, it might be when you're fully acclimated to it. Mm. So I think that two years kind of taking the first few meetings and everything like that to learn and grow. Um, to look up to my senior board member, Christine Tran. She's awesome. Um, and then to take my year as a student, senior student board member um, to kind of work um, as an even bigger advocate and to be a leader to the future junior school board member. Now, as mentioned, Hannah was sworn in as the MNPS junior student board member last week. We asked her to record some audio diaries before and after the meeting. Let's take a listen. Hi friends at WPLN, I'm in my room and I'm about to get ready for the ceremony. MMPS is extremely diverse in students' interests in race and finances. And I really want to show and celebrate how brilliant our students are all across the board. We have our student board member, our new junior board member from District 2, my district, Overton High School, Pan. <laughs> Would you please raise your right hand? I, Hannah Wynn. I, Hannah Wynn. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of this state. That I will support the Constitution of this state. And the United States. And the United States. And that I will perform with fidelity. And that I will perform with fidelity. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. To which I have been selected. To which I have been selected. And which I am about to assume. And which I am about to assume. Congratulations. So I'm now back from the Board of Education building. I'm at home and it is 8.15 p.m. I got to speak once about announcements, things going on at Overton, things going on with students within MNPS. There was a period to give awards and to recognize the great work of the Metro students, which I thought was amazing. I was a little bit nervous at first, but overall I felt really, really great during the meeting and I'm ready to have a great night's sleep and to see them in two weeks. So what I'm looking forward to most is probably being able to capture more student voice, see what they need from me, see what different issues MNPS is facing and what I can do to help, as well as just having a better understanding so I can move forward within my future and hopefully politics and see where that goes. I'm really excited to step in this position and make my impact. 
That's really cool. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as a student board member, tell me what role do you serve? What can you do and what can't you do? Okay, so student board members do not have a voting seat on the board, um, but we are allowed to speak during any debate and discussion, um, respond to public participation, um, and then at the end, whenever we all announce um, kind of what's going on, the district members announce what's going on in their district, and us student board members can take the time to kind of talk about students as a whole, different achievements within MNPS, or just what's happening at our school. Now, I want to talk about the Mayor's Youth Council. It's got 30 members. You all meet every Monday for two hours to work on different projects. You're both on the Quality of Life Committee. What is that? What are the goals there? Khalid. So basically the Quality of Life Committee is just trying to help the, and, and help the, the general, like, help uh, increase like transit and like uh, just make na the Nashvillians, the average Nashvillians life better. Mm -hmm. um, and we could do that in a multitude of ways. Right now we're just trying to increase voter registration and also do outreach and just volunteering in general, hopefully in the spring. Um, there, but there's a lot of ways we could take it. Like it's just a broad topic. Now, you, yeah, it's a very broad topic. I think anything can improve Nashvilleans quality of life. You're starting your second year. Last year, you were on the economic committee. Briefly, tell me about the project you work on there. So last year, we just um, on the economic development committee, we wanted to create a job fair for people who are in um, foster foster youth, specifically like age to sixteen. Six from 16 to 24 and we got I think at least like 10 businesses to come out and just um, you know stand and talk to people who wanted to apply for a job and people were able to ask questions and we had some good turnout and I was hoping to maybe continue that this year, but maybe that'll be uh, something that comes in future years. Okay. Okay. Now a lot of folks out there, they have this misnomer that teenagers, adolescents are unmotivated, that you guys lack direction. But as you guys like to say, after talking to you all, I believe that's cap, right? <laughs> Did I do it right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, awesome. Now, you know, what would you tell other young people about how to get involved and to make a difference in their communities? Hannah? I would say the Tennessee Center for Civic Engagement is a perfect way to start. Um, you got to hear the other guests and kind of what their input was on that. Um, but if you don't have a chapter at your school, then start one. Um, there's so many also different ways to get involved, um, whether that's student government association, um, kind of whatever you have available to you. I know that it can be very hard to kind of take that first step. Um, but my kind of motto on that is that if you get told no, then you're asking the wrong person. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about the future with you. You're both in high school. You'll be finishing up. Um, you'll both be finishing up pretty soon. What are you looking forward to once you graduate? Khalid? I'm looking forward to um, eventually, you know, going to college, graduating. I'm looking to do some sort, some sort of pre-med, maybe go to medical school. Um, but I'd say that Mary's Youth Council would have like a very has had a very lasting effect on my mentality towards um, just you, like government in general. And I definitely see myself in the future at least serving on some sort of board that has to do with maybe transit or. Uh, another uh, aspect pertaining to the average citizen's life and maybe that in combination with my other, I, I'm very interested in medicine and I always have been. So I feel like uh, that's just my passion. You know, that's where I'm directed to. But I think Mary Youth Council has definitely led me to definitely want to have s some sort of spot in the government. Look, it's your world and you can do what you want. You can be Dr. Mayor. If you yeah. decide. Hannah. Um, I'm looking forward to going to college for sure. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting new people. Um, for sure the right to vote whenever I turn 18. Um, voting in every single election I can. Local, office, on the federal level. Um, and overall trying to make a more broad impact on the world. Um, meeting new people. Briefly tell me, what does being an American mean to you? To me, it does not be, mean being born in this country um, whatsoever. I think that being an American is upholding democracy. I think that being an American is upholding our constitution um, and freedom. Hannah is a junior and Khalid is a senior here 
in high school in Nashville. You can learn more about the Mayor's Youth Council and the work that they're doing on the links to our that will be on our website. And if you have questions about registering to vote or how to vote here in Tennessee, join us for a call-in show about voting on Thursday. If you have a specific question you really want us to answer, call us at 615-761-2500 to leave a voicemail. We may use that answer on air. Congratulations to both of you. Good luck with senior year. Get plenty of rest, okay? Thank you so much, Dang. Khalil. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you so and thanks to you for joining us and tuning in this hour. This is Nashville as a production of Nashville Public Radio. Today's episode was produced by Catherine Cece's. It was directed by Tasha A.F. Lemley. Our technical director and board operator is Liv Lombardi. The masterminds behind our theme music are LaRange and Namir Blade. Special thanks to the parents and schools of our guests for allowing them to hang out with us in the middle of a school day. All right, you can listen back at thisisnashville.org or wherever you get good podcasts. And the conversation doesn't end here. As always, tweet us on This Is Nashville, find us on Instagram, or you can call us at 615-751-2500. This is Nashville. I'm Khalil Ekelona. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. And be good to each other.